Minority Report is once again directed by Steven Spielberg and it stars Tom Cruise, Colin Farrell, and Max von Sydow. And this movie is basically about the future. It's basically 40 years from now. And there was something that was invented by Max von Sydow's character in the future, which is called pre-crime, where basically you have these three sort of psychic twins, there's two guys and a girl, and they predict the future. They predict murders that are about to happen, and they, they sort of predict the future, and there's this thing called pre-crime, which is basically like this organization that gets into those twins' heads and sees the murders, and they go solve the murders before they happen. Tom Cruise is sort of the leader of this organization, and he, at one point, sees a murder that's done by him. He sees a murder inside the twins' heads that he did. And Colin Farrell's character and the rest of the pre-crime members sort of attack him because if that happens, if they see a vision of someone murdering someone, they're now under arrest. So Tom Cruise is on the run and he's also trying to figure out whether the twins had something called a minority report, which is when the twins disagree and the vision in their head isn't correct. Welcome back once again to my Steven Spielberg series. I already covered Duel, Jaws, uh, and Hook, and now it's time for my fourth review in this series, which is going to be for Minority Report, which I just explained. Now, Minority Report I saw probably maybe about a year ago or something, and I, I saw it the first time, and I was blown away by this movie. I mean, this movie is definitely one of my favorite Spielberg movies that is out there. It's definitely my top five Spielberg movies, and this is one of those movies that not a lot of people talk about. I mean, this movie came out in 2002, and some of the stuff that was in this movie is insanely good. For its time, even. I mean, I honestly think Minority Report is on the level of movies like The Matrix. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it could even be better than The Matrix. It's that, it's on that level of good, in my opinion. It's one of those movies that you have to pay attention to every single scene, every single word that's coming out of these guys' mouths to understand what's happening, because it's one of those movies that confuses you if you don't constantly pay attention to what's happening. It's one of those movies that keeps your attention, it keeps your focus. You can't just be on your phone checking Facebook while the movie goes. It's one of those movies where you just can't do that. You have to have full laser vision focus. Tom Cruise in this movie, like I briefly mentioned before, plays this character called John Anderton. He's the leader of pre-crime. And this is my favorite Tom Cruise performance I've ever seen. There's some Tom Cruise movies that I still need to see, like Collateral and Jack Reacher I still need to see, and a lot more. But Tom Cruise, like out of the performance I've seen from him, this is my favorite Tom Cruise character. This character is broken. He's not just your superhero Tom Cruise, like Ethan Hunt, who can do anything. This guy is a broken guy. He lost his son. His son is dead. His wife is divorced from him. He's taking some sort of futuristic drug to deal with this. I mean, Tom Cruise is broken in this movie, like, but he's so good. Like, the action he's able to do is fantastic. Like, there are so many scenes with Tom Cruise in this movie that made me cry, or nearly cry. Like, the scene where he's looking at the hologram of his kid and his wife, and he just wants to be with them so bad because they're gone, and it's so sad. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant in this movie, and he's one of my favorite actors, so that's saying something. Colin Farrell is sort of the villain, but the real villain is actually uh, announced later. We don't know who it is yet. Uh, Colin Farrell, I really like him in this movie. I know he's a, he's a pretty well-known actor. I haven't seen him in a lot of stuff. I feel like this, and maybe a few others, I don't know. I feel like this is my only movie I've seen Colin Farrell in. He's awesome in this movie. I really like Colin Farrell's character. He's sort of, I, yeah, he's sort of the villain at first because he's trying to catch Tom Cruise the entire movie. He's trying to track him down and kill him, and Tom Cruise has to run from him. I really, really liked Colin Farrell in this movie. But another performance I really liked in this movie is Max von Sydow. This guy is awesome. I don't know much about Max von Sydow. This is definitely the biggest uh, role I've seen that Max von Sydow do. He's awesome in this movie. I absolutely love his character, and the twists that happen with his character later on blew my mind when I first saw it. I absolutely love the beginning action scene of this movie. It's absolutely brilliant. It's The movie literally starts up 
with this crazy action scene and immediately hooks your attention. I love movies that just start with that. Just start with an action scene and you don't know what it is or what's happening in the action scene. Basically how Star Wars A New Hope started. One of the quotes I really like from George Lucas is that he says he doesn't like beginnings. He likes to start it off with a very suspenseful scene that grips the viewer and Minority Report does that so well. I, the beginning scene is able to introduce so many characters. It introduces Tom Cruise, it introduces the rest of the pre-crime people. All of the characters we need to go, save for Max von Sydow's character, are introduced to us in this one scene and we get to understand how pre-crime works through this scene. We're not just explained how pre-crime works through people just going, just talking and stuff. We're able to watch this scene and go like, okay, that's how that works. It's absolutely genius because there's so many movies that suffer from overexposition and just people explaining it rather than showing it, and that's exactly what Spielberg does in this intro scene. I love the depiction of the future in this movie as well. I mean, this movie came out in 2002 and they literally predicted that swipe top technology would be a thing because there's like Tom Cruise swiping stuff on the pre-crime uh, computers. The outside, they show like outside and what like the roads and cars are like. And for its time, this CGI was incredible. I mean, it honestly still holds up today all the CGI and all the futuristic uh, scenery in this movie. It holds up perfectly and all the CGI that was in this movie holds up so well and this came out three years after Phantom Menace. Everything about this movie holds up, and the future seems like a place that you could actually go to. It seems like a place that you could actually be in. It seems like a place that could actually exist uh, 40 years from now. And I love how they sort of scan your eyes everywhere you go, like everywhere Tom Cruise walks, they, they scan your eyes and um, show you ads on screens that are relevant to your interests. They remember you, who you are everywhere you go. It's like such, that's probably gonna exist in the future. It just seems like things that would actually happen in the future is depicted so well. And the action in this movie, oh, so good. The things I really love about the action in this movie is that Tom Cruise is not superhero Tom Cruise. He's be getting beaten on all the time. He's such a vulnerable hero, especially with his son that died and his wife that's no longer with him. Just Tom Cruise is such a vulnerable hero. He's not just superhero Tom Cruise. And that's so well realized in this movie. It, like just the act in the action scenes, he's constantly getting beaten on because that's how you do action. Your hero needs to be vulnerable. He needs to be in a form of peril to make it more suspenseful. And that makes the movie suspenseful as heck. When Tom Cruise is first being chased by Colin Farrell and the rest of the pre-crime pre people, there is one scene that's just like the droid factory scene in Attack of the Clones, and Attack of the Clones came out two years later. And it's almost as if George Lucas saw Minority Report and it was like, I'm gonna do an action scene exactly like that in my Star Wars movie. And it's <laughs> Spielberg and George Lucas are friends, so... And now Tom Cruise is sort of on the run and he's visioned as a criminal to other people. So he has to switch his eyeballs out so that they don't identify him as John Anderton. He meets this guy that he sort of had a past with. It's a very small character. He's only there to switch in Tom Cruise's new eyes. And then when it shows the clips opening Tom Cruise's eye, it's so creepy and so disturbing because they literally show him getting his eyes taken out and new eyes being put in. It's really disturbing stuff, but it's really good. And then shortly after, he breaks the girl precog out, and they're like inside of the store where she start where she starts predicting stuff so that Colin Farrell and his gang doesn't see him. That's so good. She tells him to stay there, and then the balloons cover him completely because she knew that the balloon guy was gonna stop. So good. So so much clever stuff because the precog can predict the future. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip to the part where Tom Cruise finally figures out that the person that was in the murder tape that he saw of him murdering, the person that he was supposed to murder, is the guy that killed his son. He like looks at these pictures and it's like, oh, it's the guy that killed his son, so maybe he is actually going to kill him, and that prediction was right. It's the first of probably like three plot twists <laughs> that are in this movie. And it, it, it's so good when Tom Cruise thinks this is the guy that killed his son, 
and he's angry, he's crying, he is thrashing on this dude. You're really able to identify with John Anderton because this guy is broken. The stuff that happened to him in the past is insane and you feel so bad for this dude. And then there's the second plot twist that comes in where Tom doesn't shoot him. He decides not to. He decides to just arrest him instead for the killing of his son. But then the guy reveals that it was all a setup. He wanted him to think that he was the guy that killed his son because he needed to die in order for his family to be given money. It was all a setup by somebody we don't know yet. It's so mind-blowing. Throughout the climax of Minority Report, so many plot twists are thrown at you and you're just like, the wind is taken out of you every time a plot twist happens. Shyamalan would be proud. And then it's also very clever how he grabs Tom Cruise's hand and forces him to pull the trigger. So when Tom Cruise actually did kill this guy. That prediction was not wrong. And then the third and final plot twist happens where Max von Sydow is revealed to be the person that set up Anne Lively's murder, who was the mother of the female precog, and that was another case that Tom was on before he went rogue. And Colin Farrell figures it out right when he's talking to Max von Sydow's character, and then Max von Sydow takes out a gun and kills off Colin Farrell right there. It's so good, just like so many times in this movie, the wind is taken out of you because of the plot twist that happens. Like, nobody could have suspected that Max von Sydow was the villain the whole time. And then later on, he goes to his divorced wife's house for a while, and he has the uh, female precog with him. And then there's a scene where she's talking about his son, and Tom Cruise breaks down crying. And he's he wants this son back so bad. And just throughout this movie, you feel so bad for Tom Cruise. And that was another scene in this movie that I nearly cried. And then he gets captured by the pre-crime people because they're still after him. Eventually, he finally gets caught. And I think they were about to make him a precog. I think. I think that's what their plan was. <laughs> so they captured him and shaved his head and, he, and all that. And then Max von Sydow shoots himself. He literally shoots himself. Commits suicide at the end of this movie. And just, Minority Report is incredible. It's such a good movie. This movie forces you to pay attention constantly. You need to constantly be paying attention, and there's so many plot twists that happens, and so many things that'll just blow your mind. The action is incredible. Tom Cruise is a vulnerable, broken hero. It's fast-paced. Everything holds up. Everything about Minority Report is absolutely incredible. Why isn't this movie talked about anymore? This should be called a classic. This should be in the movie's of Hall of Fame, just Hall of Fame of movies in general. I'm gonna give Minority Report an A+. Plus. <laughs>guys, if you've seen Minority Report, be sure to comment your thoughts on it because people need to see this movie. This needs to be a movie that's recognized more because there's so many Spielberg movies that are just underrated and aren't talked about that much and Minority Report is by far one of them. So guys, if you like the Steven Spielberg series, be sure to subscribe, be sure to like this video, be sure to comment and yeah. And also my next Spielberg review is going to be Catch Me If You Can. Another underrated Spielberg movie that I'm really happy to talk about. So yeah, videos, they will be coming at you, and I'm having so much fun making these. And yeah, be sure to check out the rest of the Spielberg series, and bye-bye now.